So I was looking at my analytics on my channel today and I can't believe that I've actually been doing what I do for five years now. And it all started from one little video of me reviewing my old Keyway RKV125. Now for me personally, it doesn't feel like it was five years ago. And I never ever thought that I would be where I am today at 9,000 subscribers with over 2 million views and 480 videos. But what does it actually take to be a motor vlogger? You don't need the next gen 360 camera or anything like that like a lot of motor vloggers out there do now have. You don't need brilliant editing software, you don't need the best computer. I mean everything that I've got now it's taken me time to build up everything that I've got. So right now I'm filming on a Nikon D5600. Now that's not something that I've just had from the start. I first started off using a Sony AS15. But when I first started out, I didn't have a great editing software. I was using Windows Movie Maker and I was editing and uploading on a little notebook which had like two gigabytes of RAM and it yeah it was it was hell, okay. It probably took around about five to six hours just to upload a video and I'd just leave it there all day just to render and then upload. But what I'm trying to say, you don't need all of this gear that motor vloggers are now showing you. When you see their videos, you have to take into account that they have probably been given that for free, especially if they're a bigger motor vlogger. So it's not something that they've actually gone out and bought, it's just something that they've been given by a company. But yes, of course, it does look amazing, and you'd hope it would look good for a Insta360 camera, but you don't need that. And I'm gonna tell you the five things that you need to get started in motor vlogging for very cheap, if not for free. So let's start off with editing software. Now, like I said, I used to use Windows Movie Maker. I then went on to use a editing software called Shotcut, which is also free, and you'll be able to download that for free as well. I then moved on to Sony Vegas 11, which was also <laughs> free, if you get my drift. I then eventually got fed up of Sony Vegas because it does crash a lot. I moved on to Premiere Pro just because I got a big package, you know, I had Photoshop and everything else, but then that costs money. But you definitely do not need Premiere Pro like I use. You don't even need Photoshop like I use. I just use it because it's a lot easier for me and it's a lot quicker for me. There is downloadable software like GIMP that you can use to edit thumbnails. You can even use paint if you really, really don't want to download anything. As for using music on my videos, I try not to use that much music just because there tends to be a lot of copyright issues on that. But you can get no copyright music if you just type that into YouTube. And then if you go into your browser and type in free download MP3 or download converter, you'll then be able to put that URL on to that browser and then download that song. I can hear the neighbor's dog outside as well. They've left it outside again. Now on to cameras, or filming equipment, audio, visual. I started off, like I said, with the Sony AS15. Now, like I said, that camera was great, but it did freeze quite a bit and it wasn't splash proof or waterproof. Eh, and it'll be very hard for you to probably find one now. The next best thing which I got was the GoPro for Silver. And that pretty much carried me through to 2020 until I recently upgraded to the GoPro 5. Now there wasn't anything wrong with the GoPro 4 Silver. It's a fantastic motor vlogging camera, if not the best 
motor vlogging camera. But once again, it wasn't waterproof, it wasn't splash proof, unless you put the case on it. And what happened to my GoPro 4, it eventually died because I've been using it for that many years. And to be fair to GoPro, it did go through a lot. With the GoPro 5, I just want a little bit more in that picture quality, as well as the sound quality. And also later on, down the line i want to do a bit more in terms of getting it a bit wet take that for what it is <laughs> but the only thing i don't like about the gopro 5 and up is this little thing and that is your mic adapter which brings me on to audio what i have been using over the years is a boya lapel mic now while that was a very good cheap option it did crackle quite a bit at high pitch and it didn't deal very well with wind noise and you've probably noticed that a lot of moto vloggers use purple panda mics and that is what i now use and i paid around about 20 pounds for that and i have to say i am so glad i bought it and i'm just annoyed that i didn't buy it sooner it's definitely worth the investment and it is without a doubt the best mic for moto vlogging. So that combined with a GoPro 4 and the GoPro 4 you could pick up secondhand for around about 50 to 60 pounds now on eBay as well as the purple panda lapel mic that's another 20 pounds there. So you don't have to go spending a lot of money just to get started out in moto vlogging. <laughs> Now that you've got all the gear, what do you film? What is it that you want to imprint on the world, okay? There are many different forms of motor vlogging. Some people do reactions to other bikers, some people do compilations of crashes and rage, some people do videos like mine where I just talk about what's on my mind or I do reviews or I do installs. I do a bit of everything really and there's not one thing that I actually focus on. Which I should because it probably would help my channel a lot more. And what I mean by that is YouTube likes everything the same. So if I constantly put up a title as Benelli TNT125 and slightly change it in a way and put Benelli TNT125 again on the next video, that video will then have a higher chance of being shared by YouTube. And that is exactly what you want if you want to get yourself noticed. So what I'm saying here is that there's plenty of different roads that you can go down, but when you first start out on YouTube, you're probably best sticking to one topic if you want to get your videos known. But my best bit of advice I can give you is to do something that you absolutely love. So whether you like working on bikes, then do a bike project or do bike maintenance videos, or if you just like talking about things in general, it could be absolutely anything really. Or if you're just doing like reviews and you're very good at reviews, maybe you should do that. Just do something that you enjoy. Because if you are just doing this for the AdSense, or if you just want to grow your channel very, very quickly, unfortunately that's not going to happen. Okay, and this is where a lot of people usually stop doing YouTube because they think that, oh, they're going to make a load of money or they're going to get hundreds of thousands of views or hundreds of subscribers straight away and it just doesn't happen. That's not completely true. It does happen in very, very small instances that somebody was very lucky enough that the algorithm picked their video up and it just got blown out of proportion. But things like that do not happen often and it's not something that you should rely on or even hope for because it really is random and there is no way of knowing what YouTube will do and how it will promote your videos and if it will promote your videos. So that's the best bit of advice I can give you is just do what you love and it sounds a bit cliche but it's true. And this is a question that I ask myself quite a lot and that is where am I going to be in the next five years? Am I going to still be doing motor vlogging? 
I might completely change, I might go into something else, and that doesn't matter. Like I said, what's important is that you do what you enjoy, and if people enjoy what you do as well, that is even better. And there's plenty of motor bloggers out there who are now massive and have completely gone down a different road from what they used to do. Now of course what I do will always involve being on a bike, but I may drive a car, I may go on a boat, I may do this. All in all, my whole being, my whole channel has always revolved around just enjoying what I do. And what that includes is travelling, is talking to you guys, expressing my opinions and my thoughts. And still to this day, it amazes me that anybody actually watches my channel. <laughs> so if this has helped you at all, please give this video a big thumbs up. Let me know your ideas in the comments below as well and what you've got planned for your channel.